Hi everyone, in this video I thought I would show you this series of pendulums behind me. This particular series is called a pendulum wave, and devices like this have gone viral on multiple occasions over the long course of YouTube. These pendulums are aligned such that if you set them swinging, they form all sorts of different patterns as they cross one another, and you see double helixes and triple helixes and spirals. It's really cool to watch. Eventually, the patterns that you see will begin to repeat themselves, and the amount of time that it takes from launching the pendulum to when you see a repeat is something that you can determine with the lengths of the pendulums and how they relate to one another. Now, when I first started work on this project, I was not intending to make a video about it. I was making this project as something that I was hoping kids would be able to build for themselves during an upcoming science demonstration I'm doing later in the year. It turned out to be a little too complicated for that use, so I think I'm going to use a different pendulum project for that particular demonstration. But I think I'll still bring this project along and maybe even build a bigger one, because it's really fun to watch, even if the kids can't make one for themselves. I started out by building the frame of this pendulum, and what I decided to use for the material were these inexpensive 1x2 pine boards. The measurements for the frame were made so that I could cut every piece from a single 8 foot long section of board, which is what these 1x2 planks are sold in. So the top section of the frame is 30 inches long, and each of the legs are 16 and a half inches long. So after cutting 4 legs and the top section, that works out to 8 feet. I know that a lot of you are annoyed with my use of imperial measurements so often in my videos. Although I would also prefer to work in metric, all the materials that I buy in the United States are very often made to imperial measurements. And so I'm kind of stuck where I would have to do a whole lot of conversion myself if I wanted to work in metric, but I'll use metric measurements later in this video. Still working off the idea that I wanted this to be a children's project, I decided to use these push pins to hang the pendulums from. I thought these would be easy for children to use to press into the soft pine boards. Unfortunately, they don't press in all that easy, so I did have to drill pilot holes to insert each of these push pins. I decided I wanted 16 pendulums in this array, and however many pendulums you would like, you just need to have one more push pin than the total number. So since I want 16 pendulums, I need 17 push pins evenly spaced along the length of this runner board. The most affordable option I found to use as weights for each pendulum are these large nuts. And you can get these at any hardware store, or you can save some money by finding a farm supply store or anywhere that sells nuts and bolts by the pound, and you'll only pay about a dollar or two for all the nuts needed for a pendulum like this. The heavier the weights are that you choose, the better this will work, because they'll have more inertia, and so each pendulum will be able to swing for longer. The pendulums can easily be hung in the array by first feeding them onto a length of string. And I chose 30 pound kite string because it's thin and very strong. Each nut can be hung from the frame by twisting the string around the push pins and pressing the pin tightly to secure the string in place. Okay, so if you've watched my videos for very long, you might have noticed that quite often I like to dive right into a project without doing very much research, because I like to learn along the way, and not doing research kind of helps me to put my own spin on things. For this project, I assumed that the pendulums only needed to be held in a linear slant in order to make the wave patterns, and that's what I was thinking would make this project fairly easy for children to accomplish. That's not quite correct. You actually do need a very specific curve that can be determined with some math. This is the equation to use in order to determine the length of each pendulum in the array. And we have L, which stands for length, G, which stands for gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. We have pi, 3.14. Then we have three other numbers. We have K, N, and T max. Now, N is a pretty easy number to figure out. That stands for the number of the pendulum that we're on in the array. So if we wanted to calculate the length for the second pendulum, we'd put 2 in for N. If we wanted to calculate the length of the third, we'd put in 3 and so on. What Tmax stands for is the amount of time in seconds that we would like the pendulum to take before we start to see repeating patterns. So if we'd like our pendulum wave to last for, say, 90 seconds, we would insert 90 in place of Tmax. The last variable is k, and we actually don't know what this number is. We have to solve for this number 
based on the length of the very first pendulum in the series. So in order to solve for k, I just need to decide on a length for my first pendulum and input that measurement in meters. So my first pendulum in my array is 0.23 meters. I then input 9.8 for gravity, 2 times pi for this figure here. I put in 1 for n because I'm working on the very first pendulum in my series, and I decided on a 24 second duration before repeat. Now solving this equation is just simple algebra since we only have one variable left that's unknown, and it outputs a value of k equals 23. So now that I know in my case that k equals 23, I have a number to input for every variable on this half of the equation. And by replacing n with all the numbers 2 through 16, I can solve L, the length, of each of those individual pendulums. And so assuming a starting length of 0.23 meters, these are the outputted numbers for all the lengths of my various pendulums down the line. So you can see that this works out to be a very slight curve. Though I'm not surprised I assumed it was linear just from looking at it in videos without a description. Now that I've gone through the trouble to make all of the calculations and precisely measure the length of each of these pendulums, I decided I'd like them to be a little more secure than the push pins, so I did hot glue each of the lines in place. Notice that in this design I am not measuring each pendulum from where the string is twisted around the pins, but rather from where the string is contacting the top board. I'm actually relying on the corner of the board to be the top of the pendulum. It turns out this project is a little bit too complicated for my original purpose of being a project that kids could put together in a day. But given a little time, I think you could make one yourself at home. You can use the same equation using a longer or shorter starting length in order to make a pendulum of any size. However, I'll of course put the measurements for this specific pendulum in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And if you really enjoyed it, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon, and I'll have links to my Patreon page in the description below. I could really use your support if you can help out in that way. Either way, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.